All right, thanks for joining us there. Sorry, we're slightly late here. We were trying to figure out some uh, technical difficulties on our end, but we're up, we're looking good. Thanks for joining us. We got, we're probably gonna get about a little bit over a hundred people. Gus, probably like 120 or so. Love and it, love it. Thanks everybody. Let's give them a few minutes, uh, sorry, a few seconds. We're already in, uh, mm. oh, we might end up at 150. All right, so for those of you joining us, let us know what city, what state you're in. And if you're in the mood, let us know what your favorite food is. Gus, my favorite food, I still have to say is cheeseburgers and French fries. As unhealthy as that is, that is my favorite food. What about you, buddy? Oh, for me, I got, well, you know, outside of Mexican food, because that's too easy. Uh, it honestly is Indian food, man. You know, oh. so, anything that's with at that the top of my list. Yeah, that butter naan bread with anything on top is, is pretty hard to beat. It's pretty you hard. You know, the, the only challenge is that it's too, it's a little too spicy for me sometimes. And my wife's Indian too, so. Oh, that's great. <laughs> she cooks the most amazing Indian food, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Right? I always take it mild. I always get the mild Indian food. I cannot stop. There is, no. dude, real Indian food is not mild. What are you talking no, about? No, no way, no way, no. There is no mild. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. All right, thanks for joining us. So we got New Jersey, Jupiter, Florida, Ryan, what's up, man? Patrick says he loves wings. Yes, I got to say, wings oh. are good. Wings are good. Wings, wings are awesome. Wings are awesome. Steven, Steven says, Omaha, Nebraska, food favorite, prime ribs. How does that, I mean, how did we not know that, Steven? That, of course, makes sense. Omaha and prime ribs. That's, 100%. Come on. Joe says, Clayton, North Carolina, all but, Lebanese food. Lebanese food is insanely good. Oh, Lebanese food is really good. That is Lebanese. very, very flavorful. We got chocolate ice cream. How? Hey, wait a second. That's not. That's dessert. Uh, Adele, that's dessert. Even though I love it. Uh, Carnes of the tacos. You know, I like this dude. Uh, Lori saying I'm North. Hungry, uh, man. North of Boston. I'm hungry. Can you tell I'm hungry? Yeah, sure. Uh, cheesecake. Oh wow! Somebody got creative here. Uh, Meg. Here we go. Ontario, Canada. And poutine, is it poutine, fries, gravy, and cheese? That is, that's, I think that might be my, my wife's favorite or one of them. Anyways, let's get this party started. We got a lot of people from all over the United States and Canada. Awesome. Let us know if you're outside of these areas, but let's get this started, man. Today, we wanted to talk about the three ads on Facebook that we should be really using, right? We're going to be talking over them. We're not going to be showing you any examples so this way you could pay attention if you're driving or if you're doing other things and listening to us in the background we could definitely do it that way but for those of you that don't know gus gus he runs he's a ceo of power isa and that's a it's an isa company uh, inside sales agent if you want to dude there's so many different acronyms for isas i just oh, yeah. go with your inside sales agent okay that's what it is. They, they dial for your database. They dial for incoming online leads or incoming leads in general. We've been using Gus's company for two years now. And his background's pretty cool. If you missed it last time, Gus, give me like a 30 second snippet of your background because that time you met um, Bill Gates is really fun. So tell us about your Microsoft days. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Tristan. You know, former Microsoft engineer. I worked there for like a decade. Realized my real talents were in real estate, talking to people, getting things done, making things happen, building teams. Um, and that's what I did since 2013. I left Microsoft, went into real estate full time, and I started this company, Power ISA, in 2015 after I saw like a huge, huge, huge need in the industry uh, for this role, the ISA role, inside sales agent or any other way you want to, you know, spell that acronym. Uh, I always tell people it's the telemarketing role for real estate. That's what it's called. It exists in many of in SaaS and technology, um, you know, SDR, ISA, uh, telemarketer, you know, there's a different ways to call it. It's the person that hits the phone. That's all they do all day, every day, um, doing outbound prospecting, responding and qualifying inbound leads and closing for those appointments and those life transfers. That's what we do day in, day out. 
Perfect, man. All right, let's get started with Facebook. A lot of you know the stats here. Some of you don't. I'll go through them really quick with you. There's approximately 217 million Americans that are on Facebook on a monthly basis. That's crazy. That's 70% of our population. And it it's just, it's the same all across the whole world, which is crazy. Uh, where, wherever Facebook is, obviously, there are some places we're not allowed in. But uh, for those places that are, it's a very powerful tool because that's where people are, you know, Facebook, Instagram. And what we're talking about right now is creating the right ads with the right message to be able to connect with people, right? Because it's, it's getting a little difficult out there to really penetrate through and identify or connect with those audiences. So that's why I love this topic, Gus. And let's yeah. get right into it, buddy. What we can do number one, or we can start it how you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let, let's start from the bottom, work our way up. Uh, you know, that, that makes it, you know, a little bit of a drum roll effect, right? So uh, one thing I want to, you know, tell people how we compile this number is not like, a, you know, this is not what Gus thinks are the top three or was Gus would like to be the top three. Um, you know, I'm actually not a marketer. I'm not a marketing specialist myself. But what I do is we help call leads for over 350 different Facebook campaigns pretty much every single day, right? So, so we help teams convert the leads from these campaigns. So that's how we measure this, right? I'm not like some super marketing expert that, you know, looks in the psychology of these ads. I'm, I'm not that smart. I literally just make the calls and I go back and see, hey, what are the ads that are killing it? killing it and these three ad campaigns are converting between 30 to 40 percent of their leads to appointment that's that's why they're around wow. the, in the last 30 days and it's a 50 okay. lead minimum in the last 30 days uh, have been submitted to these campaigns and we're converting them at a super super high level that's why we're talking about them today so pretty 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 wild pretty crazy um and and, and that's kind of the methodology behind it and we publish this list every month that's the reason we don't publish the creative system because we don't own the creative part of it. We actually don't see, in a lot of these cases, we don't even see the creative part of it, but we know what the ad is. We know the, the offer that's being made and we're able to communicate that to folks and go, hey guys, you need to try out these different ads in your market um, and see what kind of results you get. So, uh, so, so in reverse order, in reverse order, um, the, the number three performing ad in the last 30 days, and this is pretty, uh, uh, this, is, th this hadn't happened in a long time this kind of ad and this is called the single property listing ad the the class i mean this is what a lot of you know realtors consider to be a facebook ad they a lot of the you know a lot of the automation a lot of the tooling you know uh, killer williams command a lot of the other tools that'll let you real geeks have this ability to, to kind of do a single listing ad very easily right you can just grab a property you want to market you create a facebook ad off of that and you publish it that is typically not a super high performing ad that we see However, we're looking at this market. In the market that we're in right now, uh, the, if you hit this, you hit the right market with an available listing, um, and it can go crazy, right? So right now, you know, we hadn't seen this be. It's one of the top ads in a long time. Uh, I, I'm just assuming that given where the market is at, really, really starved for listings. We're going into the season in a lot of these markets where you don't see, typically you don't see a lot of listings in this that time of the year. So, you know, I think all of those forces kind of, you know, propelled uh, th this kind of ad to be number one. So agents, if you have listings, put them on Facebook. And if you don't have a listing, ask someone that has a listing to give you permission to put that listing on Facebook. Why? Because buyers want to see inventory. Buyers want to see listings. If you have a nice picture of a nice home, uh, that is in this market, we're looking, that's enough to get a buyer's attention. They want more information. They want to see where that property is at. They want to see what it's listed for. They want to see, they want all that information. So typically not a very high performing ad, Tristan. This month, hey, you know, 2020 is breaking all the rules. So that's another, you know, rule broken this month uh, in, in, in the last 30 days. Really, really successful single property listing ad. And again, it's important when you have, and this, is, this goes for any ad you're going to publish on Facebook. You have to have that nice looking, initial picture we and all of these ads just well, let me also say the top three ads all three of them are single image ads single image ads these oh. are not I, i'm not i'm not i'm not kidding you man this is a hundred percent real right again this is a type of campaigns are lead conversion campaigns they're That's not engagement they're not brand building they're not you know 
maximizing for views. They want leads. That's what these campaigns want. And we've seen, you know, day in and day out, typically uh, the ones that, were, that are run with us, uh, that the single image ads tend to outperform the carousel and the video ads. Again, I'm not saying that's going to happen in every single instance. I'm just telling you, I'm just calling it how I see it. These have been the top performing ads that we're seeing, right? So it's so, so really interesting. I, I, that always shocks me because you have all this technology around Facebook. And I tell people, if you just post and try, give it a try, you, you, you're going to have a winning formula, right? So you, you have a lot more in your favor than you probably think you do, right? Because a lot of these single image ads can still perform well. And again, it's the market that we're in. Very, very hot market that is starved for listings. So, so Gus, yeah. when you're looking at, let's say an ad that on a Facebook ad that has a property, let's say it just listed, right? Here it is, it's amazing. Here's some picture. Here's the main picture. Are you looking to boost that or are you going to the back end of ads manager and creating a lead ad out of it? What is, so, what does it look like? Great, great, great question, Tristan. Really, really good question. None of these are boosted posts and, 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 of my entire, and we have to retract the top 20 ads. None of them are boosted posts. They're all are going to go in the back end, create a single image, you know, ad um, and, and create it through a regular campaign on, on, on the Facebook. So there is a little bit, you know, that people do need to figure that out, how to create a lead conversion campaign, right? You're, you're looking for lead conversions. That's the main thing. That's the objective of the campaign, leads, gen, lead generation, generate leads. Got it. It's a lead format. People are going to fill out their information on these ads and mm -hmm. it's a single image ad. And that is the same for the top. In fact, look at, I'm looking at the top 20 right now. The top 20 are that way. Right? Th this is a, a pretty uh, tried and true formula uh, for lead generation. Again, a lot of these other types of ads have other objectives. They don't just want to generate, get your name, phone number, and email. They might have other objectives, which is create a custom audience, create engagement. Uh, they want you to go to a website. There's different ads for different purposes. The one I'm talking about right now is really specifically ads that give you leads. Ads that give you leads. That's basically the name of the game. Easy. So you're looking really for um, a lead, lead ads. Nice. Lead ads. Lead ads, lead formats, yeah, 100%. You want to have a, a single ad with a lead form on the back end, which, it, when the, which means when they click on the ad, whether it says learn more, get info, whatever it is, you know, a, a contact here, um, it's going to get their information and send it over to you. Uh, and, and typically, these ads, uh, it's an instant response, right? It's like they, they don't have to fill it in anymore. They just click on the ad, and it automatically sends their name, phone number, and email that's registered with Facebook over to you, which is pretty awesome. I love it, man. I love it. Absolutely. So that's the first uh, number one, you know, campaign number one. Uh, well, it's, you know, third place campaign in the last 30 days. Second place campaign uh, in the last 30 days. It's an interesting one, right? This is what we call a lender focused campaign, a lender ad, lender focused campaign. And what does that mean? It means an ad that is talking about really low interest rates, right? Again, not surprising, not surprising. Interest rates took another dip in the last 30 days. Uh, you know, it's been a pretty wild year when it comes to interest rates. So you want to get buyers attention in this market, talk about the ultra, ultra low interest rates that can potentially qualify for. And this kind of ad is a little bit tricky, right? Because it, it's, a, it's a more regulated industry than regular retail real estate, which is already regulated on Facebook, by the way. Um, but you have to make sure that your ad is compliant. Right. So you have to make as a realtor, you want to make sure you have a lender with you on this campaign. Right. Because, you know, and again, not an expert in this, not a compliance guy, but you want to make sure that their compliance people approve this ad, essentially. Right. And, and I think it has to have like their identifying information. They can't make wild claims. They can't guarantee stuff on this ad. Again, you know, as long as you make a compliant ad, you're going to be OK. But I am here to tell you it is worth the trouble because I'm seeing this ad, uh, you know, lender ad. Uh, convert at 33.7%. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to jump through those hoops uh, to get 33% conversion on ad any day of the week, right? So uh, find a way to talk about the great opportunities that are out there for buyers, right? Talk about those interest rates. Talk about uh, some of these ads will put first time buyer programs if you have them available in your area, um, you know, down payment assistance programs. You want to talk about the benefits that a lender can bring to the table, right? And, and, and the, the one thing, the one piece of feedback, like I said, the only really caveat for these kinds of ads with a lender focus is the compliance aspect of it, right? So make a compliant ad, 
follow the rules, you'll be okay. All the ads that we run are compliant. Um, so so, so th it works, guys. Yeah, even with all the compliance issues, it works. Even with the special ads category. Tristan, have you ever talked about that to the audience, what the special ads category is? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, all, all the time. Let me, um, let me see if I can open it up. Give me a second. Um, because I was going to ask you a question, though. When you're creating these ads, are you creating them for, or, or you're seeing them being created where people do instant forms where it populates the leads or are you prompting people to call the business? Because there's two options for the lead method. Yeah, we're, we're always getting their information. We're always getting their information. The reason we don't want them uh, to do an immediate call is one, uh, we, we, we're not sure someone's gonna be able to pick up immediately right away. And number two, uh, we want to make sure that we have all of their information so we can follow up with them, right? So, so the the call, I mean, the, the, the calling thing has its purpose. I understand it. I get it. Um, but we want their information to be in control. We want to be able to, to get their email, email for marketing purposes, email for retargeting purposes, you know, all these things you want to do. Um, getting their information is kind of the best outcome that we've seen, right? It, allow, it, it kind of puts us in control of that situation. Perfect, dude. Perfect. I like it. All right. So, when we're looking at these ads, what would an ad look like that that has the lender information and the agent information? And who do you think is typically getting that that lead? Who should be calling first, the lender? Or oh, the okay. great question. Okay, great, great, great question. So, and and I hear this. It, no, I almost think of it as an objection. Like, hey, no, but you know, I've got a lender on the campaign. I mean, should it yeah. be so? ISA lender, real estate agent, right? Potentially um, have three people that are gonna get this lead uh, at the same time, essentially. And what are they supposed to do uh, uh, to convert it? So is, is there a particular order? Is there, you know, should you wait until someone's made a contact to, to call? So this is the funny thing, Tristan. The answer is call as soon as you're able to, right? So I, I, I tell, if, if you get a text notification that lead comes in and you're available, give them a call. And that goes the same thing for the lender, same thing for the ISA. It is rare, it is very rare that they're going to trip over each other to call that person. It's it's not, I mean, it sounds like it's a like a big problem, Tristan. Our biggest issue is that agents and lenders don't make calls, not that they're making too many calls. I always tell people, err on the side of making the call with the with the client. So I, I, I and people trying to make these complicated systems of, hey, you call first and I'll call second and then I'll wait for the ISA to try and call first before I make a call. Guys, this is not really a, in practice, this doesn't really happen, right? The, the, the lender and the agent are busy. Uh, um, unless they have dedicated ISA teams, that might be a little bit of an overlap. You might want to put some timing there. If you don't have a dedicated ISA team and this lead comes in during business hours or off business hours, make the call as soon as you're able to. Make the call as soon as you're able to. For most agents, to be honest with you, Tristan, um, text message notification comes in and they're going to call as soon as they see that text message. That's all right. At the very least, you should have a set time every day, at least in the mornings, to call all of your leads. At the very least, folks, right? You're calling, you're making sure you're making those calls at least once a day, a dedicated lead generation, lead follow-up time frame to do it. Ideally, you're getting that text notification and making that call as soon as it comes in. So again, there's different different uh, uh, ways to work around that, Tristan. I or, or what's that? Or we have a system already in place with Power ISA to just call as soon as the lead comes in, right? So. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another opportunity, right? So, and we have folks that have dedicated ISAs with us to help them solve this problem, or even our paper lead service, right? You can, let's say you don't have the, the your business is not at the point where you want to hire a part-time or full-time person calling leads. You don't have enough leads for them to call, right? If you're not generating 100 to 200 leads a month, I, it doesn't even make sense to have a part-time person calling these leads on a daily basis. So even a paper lead service, you know, like the one we offer um, can really be a, a much better option. They could call them, whether it's the weekend, whether it's a holiday, whether it's, you know, the middle of the morning, the middle of the afternoon, um, you know, they're, they're going to be on it. They're going to give these folks a call. So the important thing is call. The important thing is call. Uh, don't let people get complicated. Don't complicate things with, I've got a lender in the campaign. How should we call? How should we not call? So going back to your first question, Tristan, about what do these lender ads focus on? They, yeah. they don't have to, again, this is my understanding of it. They don't have to like split the ad between the lender and the, and the realtor, right? Is that, that, that has actually, that's not part, that's part, that's not the, the compliant aspect of it. They can make an offer about down payment assistance, about uh, talking about the interest rates. Can't guarantee they're going to get an interest rate, but they can talk about what they're seeing in the marketplace. 
Um, you yeah. know, they can talk about get low interest rates and talk about low interest rates. And they're talking about what you can offer the buyer. You look at, it's a lead magnet, right? You're talking yeah. about what the special offer is, what the opportunity is. Um, and, 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 and the buyer gets interested in that. It does not have to be a 50, 50 split. Um, you know, when, with, with, you know, this, this part is, is the lender section. This part is the realtor section. That's not what we see. Uh, in the marketplace. You know, that's a good point that you bring that up because now that I'm thinking about this more and I'm going to use, I'm going to show people some examples while you've been talking, Gus, I've been behind on ads manager, creating an ad so people can <laughs> see it. Nicely done. Nicely done, man. <laughs> This way, uh, people can kind of get a visual. But one thing that you just reminded me of is keeping current matters. And this is for the lender side of these ads. So here's the back end of KCM. It's like 25 bucks a month, right? That's easy. But if we pair it with something like what you're talking about, where we go and here's some social graphics really quick. We go and say something like uh, the prices are going up and they're more affordable type thing, right? Then we can use some of these pictures to create the ads. Here, let me go. We can use some of these pictures, some of this verbiage that they have, because they also have these great social graphics that you can grab. Nice. So for example, I'm gonna, let's say I run an ad and, I, and it's something like uh, home ownership helps, no. 87, uh, maybe this one's good, uh, but interest rates here, there's a good one. So let's just pretend it's this one, right? This year's record low mortgage rates likely won't last forever, right? Shows this graphic. It even gives you the, the suggested there captions. Go. There we go. That's kind let's of an, it's kind of an implicit, they're not advertising a rate, right? They're not advertising a rate. They're not guaranteeing you're going to get qualified for anything, but they're saying, holy cow, these crazy rates. I love this ad. This is really good. Yeah, and this is what I would run, and I'd, I'd create a lead ad out of it, right? And so now, this would be the ad, but I'm going to go back to your first ad that you suggested, which was... Single property, single property, which is property. Am still amazing for me that that's working as well as it is. It, Unbelievable. And this, look, this is our Tristan and Associates page connected to our Instagram account. It shows you what it would look like on the different feeds, right? This one's on Facebook, right? It's a, pic it's a single property this is how it looks on instagram right this is how it looks on i think facebook the news feed stories right and now here's my question to you because this is what i'm going to do right now do you ask any questions when people are signing up as a lead okay so really right really good question so and this is a, a, a really hot topic in like the ad creation communities right now. Yep. Should you ask questions? How many questions? Is it good? Is it bad? So one thing you have to understand, Tristan, and this goes, this is in general for all kinds of advertising. The more friction you put for that consumer to reach you, mm -hmm. less consumers are going to reach you, right? The more yep. friction you put in there. Because right now, by default, these ads, if you click on them, they immediately send over information. It's effortless. It's unbelievably easy. You can get people that click on it by mistake, right? That actually didn't mean to like click on, and then it's instantly sent you over the information. That is a default setting, right? The instant uh, uh, response. So you can actually get people with zero intent to buy uh, yeah. in that list, right? You get a lot of them though, right? You get a ton of people in there. You can get a hundred leads for pennies and a dollar, whatever it is. You, that's how those things can happen. Yeah. The moment you put some friction in there, less people are going to go in. However, however, you're going to eliminate those people that are in there by mistake. You're going to eliminate those people that that's are just it. curious, right? It's really that you're going to get a more qualified lead. So that's the first concept you have to understand, right? That's that's the best concept, dude. And I think those companies out there, and look, I'm, I'm going to say something and it might hurt some people's feelings, okay? <laughs> but I don't mean it in any bad way. And, I, and I'll preempt it by saying, I'm a Keller Williams agent, first of all, but that's one thing that command doesn't do, right? And this is why, um, this is why I, I don't like those lead ads because I'm gonna show you something right now that is, is a must. And you need to create right here at the very bottom, this is, there's three sections to an ad, right? Naming it, uh, making sure that it is part of the whole uh, housing, um, indicating that it is a housing and that advisory form, uh, then creating that 
ad set and then creating the actual ad here. I'm going to create the form. This is at the towards the very bottom of your wondering. And yet we've created a lot of different questions. I'm going to show you something that is super powerful that Gus is talking about. This is where you would ask your questions. And we typically ask two to three simple questions, right? And then we give them a multiple choice answer. Hey, yes or no. Number one question is, are you looking to buy your first home in the next 90 days, right? Or are you looking to buy a home in the next 90 days? That's one of our easy questions, right? And then you can see they'll fill it out right there. The next question we ask is, do you need to sell a home first, right? And then sometimes the third question we ask is, have you already spoken to a lender? Are you going to purchase all cash, depending on what it is? But those are the questions we typically add there. And you can add multiple choice, short answer, conditional, right? Or even set an appointment directly with you. And we typically go for the multiple choice question, which is, uh, are you looking to buy in the next 90 days? Question mark. And then you want it to yes or no. That's it. And look, look over here, right? It's doing it at the same time. I don't have a headline text because I didn't add it, but I can add that easy. I just want to show you this as they answer, then they'll take them to that next one. And you know what? The questions are right underneath too. So they go, they're sequenced, right? And then I can request all their information. Here's one other thing here. And besides the question, here's the form type, right? Do I want to go for more volume, which is kind of what you're talking about, Gus, which yeah. is let's just get people that are interested kind of a little bit, Immediate. right? Or let's go for higher intent. And look what happens when I click on higher intent, the very bottom down here, right? There's an extra form they need to fill out. They have to swipe that says, oh yeah, I'm okay with you contacting me right so you're just taking them through more hurdles it's like a funnel and facebook created it within itself so that it helps you get better quality leads now i can go into this super deep but this isn't an ads creation course right or webinar a absolutely absolutely and you know the i'm glad you brought this up tristan because this last campaign our number one converting campaign of the last 30 days does this uh, it's a twist though, it's a little bit of a twist. They put the questions in there, but they like take it to the next level, like the expert level and put it to a landing page. Like the, the ad creator owns the, the questionnaire, right? But the same principle applies guys. Uh, so Tristan, you, you, you've done that on your lead. What difference did you see when you put those three questions versus instant responses? Massive, dude. Yeah. It's massive. Instead of getting a whole bunch of crap leads, that are all top of funnel because you know Facebook does that. Yeah. All of a sudden, we're getting people that are answering questions like, "Hey, yeah, we are looking in the next ninety days." How do we know? Because they're answering the damn question, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Or they're pre-approved, right? Or yeah. whatever it is that, that the question they're answering is. And now, look, some people just go right through the questions and they'll just answer whatever, right? Yeah. But in most cases. People are answering these questions and depending on the CRM that you have, those questions are also coming through, right? And I think that's an important thing that nobody talks about either because Gus, your, your team is calling for specifically for one of my agents because he has such a massive database, right? And I'm going to show you some of those right now here. Let me just show you. I use follow up boss for this. This guy's William. Here's his phone number. Don't call him. He's my lead. Thank you. Uh, here we go, right? I'm going to zoom in. Check this out. Oops. Oh, man. Let me go back here. All right. Check this out right here. It's Zach's lead. Came in looking for a $6 million home. Look at this. This is one of the questions that they had to fill out. It went into our system to explain to us which one of those they clicked, right? I'm casually browsing right now. So when the call goes in, I know they're looking in Malibu. When the call goes in, I'm saying, hey, what's his name? William. The call would be, hey, William, it's Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. I noticed you just went to our website 
through Facebook looking for some homes. And look, William, I know you're not serious. You're not, you're not really buying right now, right? But I want to get a better idea of what you're looking for. Can you tell me what areas you're looking in? Does it have to be close to the beach? And like, yeah, yeah, we're just looking. Yeah, I know. I just don't want to spam you, right? And instead of trying to guess where they're at, they're telling you, right, where they're at already. And so it makes a massive difference, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Tristan, I, I mean, you might not know this, but I would love to know if you, if you happen to, to figure it out. Did your cost per lead change at all when you put those questions in? You remember that? It did. It, did. it went from, so people, see, this is, this is another one of my pet peeves, Gus. I'm so glad we're talking about this, by the way. Yeah. One of my pet peeves is when people come in and say, oh, my cost per lead is 25 cents. It's $1.25. It's $2. I'm like, that's awesome. But are you closing anything? <laughs> right so you look, you look at my cost my cost is set about ten dollars a lead but i can also tell you we just closed on a ten and a half million dollar lead from facebook right that came through that was just hey i'm interested i'm just browsing and our 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 commission was over two hundred thousand dollars right because we have these set in there, we have the questions, right? And so we're asking questions in order to identify which leads are more serious. And yeah, our cost per lead will go up, but our agents now, or in this case, you're helping us. Carlos is an amazing uh, ISA. So you, Carlos is calling and now he's calling more people that are interested instead of a whole bunch of people saying, oh, my son, my daughter clicked on it. Oh, that was an accident. Sorry about that. I have no idea what you're talking about. And that happens a lot too. Like I have, I have no clue. I didn't click on anything, right? That You get more of those kinds of responses um, a, a, a lot of time or they're just not, not going to pick up because they're just not committal. They don't want any calls, et cetera. That happens more, right? But you're hundred percent. So a hundred percent agree with you. Just hundred percent agree with you. Um, I think people need to understand the cost per lead is a factor. It is not in any way, shape, or form like a really important one if you're not closing deals, right? I, and, and, you know, in marketing terms, this is called cost per acquisition, right? This is the way a Amazon looks at it. It's the way e-commerce looks at it. It's the way we should look at it. What is your cost to get that deal signed and closed? Cost per acquisition. And, you know, Tristan, 10 bucks a lead for a 200K payday you can be converting 0.1% of those leads and it's a 20 X hour. Mark. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's like $10, $10 a lead is nothing for, for, for that kind of a return investment for people in the, you know, the real, in, in the rest of the world, you know, if, if you can convert 1% and you've got $10 per lead, it's still a good return guys. If you, if, even if you go all the way up to $10 a lead, if you're converting at 1%, you're going to make more money than you put money in. Right? So, the, and again, most of the country is nowhere near, you know, even with, and when you put questions in these lead forms, marketers refer to them as long form leads. These are they're considered long form leads, right? They're, they're, and, they're, and they're considered a more qualified, more motivated prospect. 100%. So, yeah, uh, 100%. And, and the debate right now uh, with, between the professional marketers is how many questions is the optimal, right? You guys are doing three and it's working for you. That's great. Uh, the campaign I'm about to talk about right now has, I think, about 15 questions in that questionnaire. But oh, my gosh. They took, to the, they took it to the max, man. But they are converting these. Again, the cost per lead is going to be proportional to that. If it Wait, was, Gus, do you ask for the Social Security as the last question or what? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it sounds like a huge amount of questions. But it's actually not, I mean, you know, because they go into detail about the property, like, hey, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, you know, what area, and you, you can go a little more in depth on, on this. You're asking the same thing, time frame, what are you looking for, motivation, but you can actually go into a lot of detail. But imagine the motivation and qualification of a lead that completes 15 questions versus one that yeah. just clicked on and instantly sent you their information. Dude. It's like, it's night and day. It's night and day. And these campaigns for the number one converting campaign, the conversion rate to appointment and life transfer combined is 38%, right? So you're not going to get that kind of conversion rate, not even close, unless you have a very motivated prospect, a very well-qualified lead. They can convert at that rate. Typical conversion to appointment and life transfer that we see on average is 10%. That's the average. Yeah. That's typical what we're going to see. 
And the only way you can quadruple that is if you had really, really motivated prospects. And I'm pretty sure all of these campaigns, I'm, I'm sorry, let me put it another way. None of these campaigns I talked about today are instant response. Let me just put it that way. None of them are going to be instant response. And I can tell because the conversion rate is so high. The only way you get multiples of that conversion rate, Tristan, is if you're qualifying uh, these leads further. You're just talking. Our ISAs are focusing on the ones that are the most motivated. That's how you can get the really high. Yeah. Uh, and you rate. find out if they're most motivated, if they're answering the most questions. 100%. 100%. So very powerful tool to have, folks. You know, I think that I'm glad you demoed that, Tristan, because if people go out and check, if they're already running Facebook ads and they add those three questions, you people should post in the group and see what happens, right? Magic is going to happen, you know, once you actually make that change to your Facebook ads, you're going to see the results immediately. It's going to be things, two things go, two things happen instantly. The price of your lead per per click or your lead per action goes up, right? And then um, your your quality goes up. Goes so up. So we, we measure this really closely with some of these top performing campaigns and running the numbers, The even if the cost per lead doubles or triples, the cost per acquisition goes down. Yeah, that's and it. That's, that's, not, yeah. that's not intuitive. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but run the numbers, test this out on your own. L find, try to do this in your market. Even if the cost per lead increases by multiples your actual cost to how many dollars you spend to get a deal signed and closed can actually go down right so yeah. try this out this a hundred percent works um you know and again this all this is all assuming you're making the calls you can you know how to convert these leads you know what to say to them you know and we've talked about this in previous webinars look it up look it up Dustin, and tristan what we talk about how to convert these leads but if you're following those steps and converting them uh you're going to see your cost per acquisition go down, even if your cost per lead, which is a very front end, a very leading indicator, even if that can go up, it's actually very, you, the, the cost per acquisition, the cost per closed deal is very flexible to those changes, right? And as long as you're converting them at a higher rate to appointment and converting them to a higher rate to sign buyer and converting them at a high, at the same, at the same rate to, to, to you know, pending buyer, to closed buyer, um, that cost per acquisition can actually go down because uh, every other step of the process gets much more efficient. It gets much more efficient. So, you know, bottom line is try, put the questions in the ad because that's the, that's the, you know, all these things I'm trying to say, all these numbers are throwing at you is put some questions, put some friction in those ads and you're going to see a, a, a big difference in that. That's it, dude. I, and we got a whole bunch of questions. So let me, um, <laughs> let me find them all here. Cause we were, we were going on a, we were, you were on a flow. So yeah, good time. Yeah. No, good. Awesome. So uh, first one, here we go. Uh, 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 where'd it go? Uh, can we, Christina has, and this is going back to like 30 minutes ago. So Christina, great question. Sorry, I missed it. The compliance items, uh, just clicking on that housing advisory button, just making sure that you clicked on that so that the ad can run if you are creating these ads on your own. If you are hiring a company to do this for you, they watch out for that. So they'll click on it and you have nothing to worry about on that point. Gus, anything yeah. you want to add on that? Yeah, it's, it's called the special ads category. Uh, it's actually very simple to do. Uh, it does restrict your ad more. But, but Tristan, one of the advantages, if you haven't run a lot of Facebook ads, just use it and then you're done. You don't have anything to compare against, right? So just, yeah. I'm telling you, all of these ads I'm talking about run in the special ads category. Don't worry about it. Just use yeah. it. Yeah, you're letting the algorithm do its thing, which is pretty powerful because they touch on oh. thousands of points. So don't don't even worry about that. Uh, 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 let me see what else. Uh, Pam is asking, hi, Tristan, can't do this through command, correct? Is that uh, what you're showing? Correct, Pam. Uh, unfortunately, command doesn't have the option to add questions, so we don't have those, right? So we're getting a whole bunch of leads, low cost per lead, but I mean, the quality, it's not the yeah. greatest. So, so Tristan, does, does it have the ability to send to a landing page or no? You put a specific landing page on there through command? No, it's, 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 running, it's running them through. Well, it does give you the option to run them, to put them on a landing page, but the problem is it's, all, it's a lead ad. So it's um, capturing the information already, and then 
I mean, it would kind of defeat the purpose after you. You're, you're you getting two lists. Twice. The, huge, the huge list and maybe potentially the small. I mean, that, that might be a kind of a crappy workaround potentially, but you know, the real solution is like you said, have it work, right? Have it do it that way. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. Um, Sharon saying nice. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the compliment on the hat. Um, let's see what else. I know Tessa had a good question on from Facebook. Greg says we need to run a class on on the questions and tags. Yeah, we probably oh, do need to run that. Hundred percent. We we absolutely should. That's a topic for the next webinar. There we go. It's a good one, dude. Uh, Yannette's asking. Yannette, sorry, Tristan. How many leads do you need to receive to be able to convert at least one transaction from Facebook? And that's a great question. And I think it really depends on who you ask that question to. Because number one, what ads? How do the ads look, right? Number two, what questions are you asking and how fast and what quality of a conversation are you having, right? Do you have people like Gus's team calling and asking those questions? Do you have people like me running the scripts and going with the dialogue? And then what's that follow-up look like, right? So there are so many parts in there that you could have a, a massive weak link and you'll get a different response on, on the ratio. I typically say if you're doing everything uh, to the best of, of a, a person that's doing great, their ability, which is amazing ads, having the questions, you've got the dialogue down, you've got the follow-up down, right? Then you're looking at probably one out of every 30 to 33 leads is gonna be an actual one that you close. Right. And that's, that's a pretty, it's a, let's say by what, 3%. So yeah. that's a really good, that's a really that's, good uh, uh, yeah. conversion. That's if you've got it all down. And look, the span of that, Gus, the span of that is like a year, right? It's not like, oh, yeah. it's not 30 like days. 3%. It's not going to happen the first 30 days. And that's really important to call out, Tristan, right? You don't measure a conversion rate to closing on any online lead source within 30 days, right? You're looking at yeah. minimum months uh, to track that conversion rate because these leads do not e even zillow leads right not, a lot of them are not going to convert uh, uh before six months uh you know even if they're higher intent leads you want to track that conversion rate over time it's the only way that it makes sense and the only way you're going to make progress on that conversion rate is if you look at it on a on a large enough time frame because we are in probably one of the longest sales cycle industries over there out there right consumer-based uh, sales cycles probably the largest consumer-based sales cycle you know, that exists, right? So uh, we have to track these these closing rates. If we're talking about closing, closings, you have to track in a six to 12 month time frame. And maybe some of these other leading indicators, how many people respond to your text message, to your calls, how many appointments you're able to set. Yeah, you can measure that on a, on a one to three month basis. That makes sense. Closings, yep. you have to have a wider uh, time frame. You got it, man. You got it. All right. What's the other one? Gene has a great question. And I don't know the answer to this, Gus. Go. Besides sending them to my friend, Travis, but where can we go and learn how to do Facebook ads? I have no idea how to prepare one. Uh, do they need to prepare one, Gus, or do they just use your company for that as well? So, well, you know, we, we don't we do not do ad uh, creation. So, I'm, you know, I'm not a marketing agency. You know, I'm not an expert in the, in the actual ad creation. There's a lot of great options out there. I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, say that any particular one is the right one. There's a lot of marketers that actually have like a, something called a done with you program. Like the marketer, Instead of you hiring the marketer at a really high monthly retainer, you know, perpetually, you can hire a marketer to teach you this stuff, right? Saying, hey, okay. marketer, give me the goods, right? Like one our friend Travis, Travis but, Tom. Uh, Travis, Travis is one of the, you know, titans of the industry. Travis has been doing it for a long time. I know he has a lot of training courses, a lot of options. He's a great option to do this. Um, you know, there's a lot of other options out there. Uh, but, but you want to get into the details, right? You want to have someone that's going to share the images, share the ad copy, share the creative. And anyone that's willing to do that, on a high-performing ad. And here's another thing. Make sure that course wasn't done three years ago, right? You want something that was working in 2020. Because, I mean, you know, and this is true every year, but even more so this year. Yeah. In COVID, tell me something that's, that's calling out low interest rates. Give me something that's calling out low inventory motivation. That's what's working in this market, right? So All anyone right. that incorporates those things, um, I think it's going to be a, a, a good option. I know Travis does, and and there's a lot of folks out there. I don't want to I don't want to mention any particular one, but it definitely it's worth to educate yourself, right? Understand, and you're going to accept. You can figure all these things out on your own, 
or you can pay some money to accelerate and see what's working right now faster. It's a trade-off everyone has to make. All right. There's a question for you here because it's a two-part question. Um, Christina is asking, are you notified when a lead comes in? I have a hard time finding the lead, but I'm going to add another question that another person had here. So the lead comes in, you're notified. Who calls it? I mean, that's, I think that's where you come in, right? So um, can you explain if you are notified and if so, how your team does it? Yeah, so, so the, all this data for, for this presentation is from our pay per lead team, the one that actually had hundreds and hundreds of campaigns that we call for. Um, and absolutely, right? We have, if people are familiar with a tool called Zapier, zapier.com, it's a tool that helps connect web applications. So through a Zapier Zap, it's called a Zap, you can send us that Facebook lead and it's an instant Zap, right? So it's literally within milliseconds of that lead getting created, it's sent automatically over to our system. And, and, and boom, they get some response, they get someone calling. So all, every single part of that uh, uh, you know, response process gets kicked off. And the advantage of having an ISA calling is that not only do they get an instant response, but they're gonna keep trying that same day. They're gonna keep trying the next day, the next week, the next month, which is where a lot of the teams need help, right? The, the, the people that respond right away, that's usually not the issue. It's the 80% of people that don't respond. The 90% of people that don't respond right away uh, that you need help with, right? So that's where an ISA can be really powerful. For people that are generating 30, 50, less, I'd say less than 100 leads a month, paper lead is a great option, guys. I mean, do, do not let those leads fall through the cracks. Do not do that. And, and all of these campaigns that I'm talking about, converting at 30%, 38%, they're using this paper lead service, right? That they're, they're using this system. So I, I know that this process can convert leads at the highest level. It's just a question, create the ads, generate the leads, right? Um, and put them into the system. So, so I'm really, really confident that this, you know, paper lead system works. Um, and that's what we offer it to the world. The, this team calls tens of thousands of leads. Um, so, so yeah, they, they definitely have built some expertise around. I like that. So here's another question for you. Are you saying that single at single picture ads are performing better than video ads for leads? So, and I want to be really careful how we answer that question. The evidence suggests that yes, the ones that we have, right? I have not done a double blind, you know, statistical analysis. I have the top 20 campaigns here from 350 that we run in the US and Canada, and all of them are single image ads. I'll kind of, I'm kind of, you know, I'm leaving it at that. Uh, I, and, and, I, and I'm sure um, there's some scenarios where video ads are going to get more engagement, they're going to get more attention, because that video ad is a little bit of a different purpose, right? It wants you to stop and view the ad. These ads don't want you to stop and view the ad. They want their, your information. They want you to click on that button. Uh, and, and I, I want to make sure people understand, you know, what the purpose of each one of these is. A video ad is creating brand. A video ad is informing, it's educating, it's getting a message out. It's, it's more, it's, it's, it's richer, richer content, which is great. These ads want name, email, phone number, and a story. That's what they want. That's very true, man. And, and so I'll answer that question. Yeah, from what we've seen for lead conversion for, for real estate, picture ads, right? Single picture and carousel ads both outperform video ads for leads. So just so that, that was a great. And I also want to say one more thing, Tristan. These are, uh, they're considered cold uh, uh, you know, cold leads in the sense that they're put up to an audience, potentially maybe the first time the audience is seeing these ads and these campaigns. I think if you were talking about retargeting, the thing, the conversation might change. And, I, and if this were a retargeting campaign, a retargeting discussion, I would have a different answer to that question, right? Because when you're talking about retargeting, it, and maybe that's another webinar we do, we talk about just go a little bit deeper into retargeting, um, that is a different scenario. That person actually might be familiar with you. They potentially are familiar with the brand. They've heard of Tristan and, their, and his team. They've heard that you guys are the team to talk to in Malibu. That, then you might have a little bit of a different piece of content for them. For example, for me, for Power ISA, all of my retargeting ads are video. All of my retargeting ads are video because it's someone that has, that has interacted with the brand. They, they know who Gus is, they know who Power ISA is. Well, here's some more content, right? But my initial ads, my cold ads, our single image as well. And this is for an ISA company. It's not talking about real estate. I'm just talking about general marketing terms. My retargeting ads are video. I'll, I'll play with video of those ads because they've worked really, really well for us. Dude, I love that. And you know what? 
we can do that as a part two if you want, like a continuation. I love that. Let's 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 take the deep dive on that. Like Facebook, Facebook ads and follow up, what that looks like type thing, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Like that. Can and you we're run talking over, about what the next one's going to be, so that's a good idea. Can you run over the three ads just really quick again? Oh yeah, you know we didn't even say the last one. I saw a question pop in. Have you talked about the top? We haven't talked about the top performance. So let me recap the ads again. The number three is single property, single listing ad. It's the market we're in right now. Even sing, even the single property ads are doing amazing uh, in, in a lot of these markets. Give it a try. And if you don't have a listing, ask permission to market a listing. There's no issue against that as long as you have written permission from the agent. Number two, lender-focused ads, talking about the interest rate, talking about taking advantage of these historic lows. Uh, and we also see lender ads, uh, in addition to the low interest rate, you can also talk about these first-time buyer programs, uh, down payment assistance can be a very high converting, very popular ad. The number one converting real estate ad that we're seeing across the board, uh, uh, you know, the U.S. and Canada is a homes list ad. And this is funny because that is like 90% of what we run at, uh, across the board. It's like the tried and true default number one ad people run is still working in this market. It's the highest converting ad. The twist that I talked about is that this ad is converting at almost a 40% rate because there is a 15 question questionnaire on the back of that ad, right? And this by far outperforms uh, every other, uh, this type of campaign I see tends to really outperform the regular instant response ads because these leads are more qualified. Yes, they're gonna answer the phone. Uh, and you know, within 30 days, the contact rate is above 50%. Within 30 days, that's amazing. That's really good, right? Uh, as an ad, it's really, really good. Uh, across the board. So really, 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 you know, uh, uh, definitely you want to give a try to those questions. And, and the suggestion that Tristan made, I think it's a great one, Tristan. Don't get confused with the landing pages and say that that's more complicated. Put three questions into your lead form. That you can just Google, go, go to YouTube, look at this webinar, or, you know, play it back and see, you know, what Tristan was doing. It's very easy to do. And your lead quality and cost per acquisition is going to improve. You know what? I might run a, a YouTube video on on creating that and post it up. So we can go back to it. Yeah. How to videos are the bomb. People love those things. The Do only it. thing is, I'd probably have to change it every month because Facebook changes so. It dumb. does change. So that's another thing. That's the danger of looking at the ads manager is that it's the ad manager of the moment, right? So, you know, hey, but you know what? It's a great way to, to refresh that content. You want to date it, hey, you know, December twenty twenty, because next month is going to be different for sure. All right, guys, I'm going to run through these questions and answer them as quickly as I can just to see if we can get through them. Okay, here we go. Lightning um, round. Quick, yeah, light, super lightning round. All right, let me see. Uh, first, let me find the questions. <laughs> oh, give me a second. Do you limit your ads, certain interests, such as first-time home buyers? We try to put one or two. I usually start with Zillow and then let the algorithm do its thing. 100%, 100%. I would try that. I always test an ad with that, an ad, an ad group, an ad set with that, an ad set without that. Because, I mean, it can work, but it can, I've seen markets where it just doesn't work at all. So, I mean, give it a try. Nice. Did I miss the third ad type? Yes. But yes. Gus just went over it. Yes. Uh, are these ads just run on Facebook or Instagram? Both. I'm curious on the power of a lead ad as opposed to drive them to a pixel landing page. Is the bounce rate on a lead from ad high. I don't think that data for bounce rate is found anywhere on Facebook. That that's a whole long question. Dan. Yeah, it is. It is. So I mean, I'm gonna, I mean, try the try the questions on the lead form because um, when you take them to a landing page, you have to have a high the page has to load, it has to be designed right. So it's more complicated, right? So answer is it depends. That's the answer. Christina says, "What budget? I typically run about. Uh, I remember I'm in Los Angeles." And I'm running at Malibu, Calabasas, Westlake Village, fifteen dollars a day per ad. That's what I do. Uh, it, differ, it varies. In most markets, you can get away with ten dollars a day all in. In most markets, you can get away with that. You're going to see results with that. Three hundred dollars a month minimum. Um, you'll, 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 in most markets, you're going to see some return with that. So I, I'd start there. Good, good. Um, Greg saying probably Wesley. Oh yeah, Wesley Rocha with a link. You can do the retargeting for you. Great, great addition. Look up Link U, L I N K U. Uh, Tessa, good, good, good. Sarah says, Who's Travis? Google Travis Tom with elevated REM. He can guide you through Facebook ads. Paul, uh, 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 Paul Williams, is the number one ad the 15 questions ad? Yeah. That would be, yeah, right. Okay. 
Perfect. Uh, what's pricing pay per lead? What is the pricing pay per lead? Uh, I don't know if I understand that question. Uh, maybe the, a rant, I mean, it can be from 25 cents a lead to $10 a lead. I mean, the, the pay per lead just depends. All right. Uh, Jared has a question for you specifically. Uh -oh. Can you please explain the experience, the background of your ISAs so we have some idea? Oh, yes. I mean, and again, you know, we have a really, really, we have 85 people in the call center. Uh, in general, we're looking for folks that, you know, excellent English because these folks are based in Mexico. Um, excellent English, call center experience. They all have at least sales experience um, and they go through our training process. So 30 to 60 days, depending on their experience level, they're going to be in our call center, in the team, uh, just training on real estate, on conversion. Um, and, you know, we have coaches training them. You know, Dale, who's, you know, a, a great, you know, contributor to LCA, he's one of our coaches. So that is, you know, the level of training and preparation they go through. Dale, Dale actually trains my team. So, damn. Oh, that's love it. Yeah. So we, we, we work with him in this company. Love those guys. All right. Can you explain a little bit more about what a home list is or what that would look like? Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. great. No, really good question. So specifically in the example I mentioned, it's a homes list of homes that are under the median price for that area. So that's an important detail actually, right? It's not just list of homes. It's like, Hey, list of homes that are under the median price. And again, in some markets that, that might be tough to find, um, but that's, what's going to get people's attention, right? They're going to get, they want to, they want that list. They want to understand it. And the creative for these ads is a list of homes. It's a picture of homes. And usually I see a really popular grid, you know, two by two grid of different pictures for homes. It's a great, it's a tried and true high converting ad. It's great. Um, definitely uh, check it out, try that. Uh, but it's a, it's, it's a, the creative is literally a picture of a home and you're advertising, you know, South Bay home, you know, uh, you know, uh, home buyers check out a list of homes under 300,000. And I'm look, using, you know, the heartland of America numbers, not Malibu numbers, under 300,000, under 400,000, San Diego County, under 700,000, West LA, under 5 million, whatever it is, right? Find the median price and, and try that there. But it's always a testing area, right? You want to find that sweet spot. In some markets, and this is, I've seen this even like in Toronto, parts of Canada, above the median, it performs better. Don't ask me why, right? So you want to start at below that median. You want to play around with it, see what kind of result you can get. Love that answer. Uh, Google ads are amazing. And he does call Google ads because most 100%. of our ads, 80% of all of our ads that we run for uh, for lead generation are Google. So Google pay-per-click. And they, they go to Gus's team and they call for us. So yeah, he definitely calls them. And they're very similar in dialogue going back and forth. They just convert at a higher rate for us. So um, that's why we use Google. Uh, another question for you, might have asked what your pay per ISA is. That varies, Gus, does it, right? Yeah, depends. absolutely. It kind of depends on the kind of contract you, like, is it a month-to-month -month contract, three-month contract? Is it a full-time or part-time? In general, uh, uh, the ISA plans, and they start at $1,400 a month, and then just depending where you want to go with that, if you, it can go up and go down, depending on the kind of deal you sign. So in that, in that range, um, and, and, if you do, and if you don't, not ready for that, then try our paper lead service starts, it starts at five bucks a lead. And that's really, really good for people. If they want to have the benefits of a massive ISA team working seven days a week, you can try, you can start with that and build up to a dedicated ISA. And then that, that $5 a lead, you're also nurturing them. Is that how it works? We're, we're, we're doing call attempts for that first conversion, but we'll do the call attempts all the way out for the first year if we need to. Oh, until you reach them and have- Correct. Until we disposition, we can, we actually qualify them. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, let's see. Is there a company that you would recommend to look at my Facebook for some reason? It's not allowing ads. I've tried. Sarah, that is a good question. I'd probably go to somebody like Travis Tom and let yeah. me type in his name. Yeah. Has, and, and Facebook for the people that are running ads and you're running into issues with Facebook ads manager, the really common issues, you might not be running special ads category. That's going to get your account disabled very, very quickly, especially if in the U S now, even in Canada, um, you're going to get your accounts banned, either disabled temporarily, disabled permanently, or you might even get banned if you're doing it too much. Special ads category, folks, understand it. It's the number one reason I'm seeing folks get their ad accounts disabled. You will get it disabled immediately if you're running ads uh, without the special. They find you running ads without the special ads category related to real estate or even tangentially related to real estate. They're going to disable you first and figure it out later. All right, and then last question here: Do you create a, do you create and place the ad on the speed to lead plan? 
Do we, cre- we don't create the ad. Just want to make be super clear with that with folks who don't do the ad creative. We Not do what we do best, which is we, you know, Typically. qualification and conversion. That's the number one thing we do, what people hire us to do. We just happen to see all these campaigns and these ads. And, you know, we, we understand which ones are the, are the best ones, right? But our job is really to do the conversion and do the call. That's the speed to lead that he's talking about. As correct, as correct. In, speed lead service. Yeah, paper lead service. And the, the conversation's not like, hey, you want to buy a home? It's a lot different, right? Correct. So, correct. There you go. Dude, we had so many questions. I did not get through all of them, okay? So <laughs> we're going to need a so part. People should try to like, drop a comment in the, in the thread later. I'll, I can try to get to them too. Yeah, um, a lot. we had a lot of questions on the webinar. So, oh, okay. Um, so let's do this. Let's think about what a part two would look like. Great. So maybe we can even show some examples of some ads, right? Definitely, definitely. And I can then, some that, that we own, that I own, that I can actually show you guys that are mine. So yeah, we can definitely do that if people want to see that for sure. All right, cool. Let's do examples of these top ads and then follow up what that looks like. Love it. Remember that? All right. Thank you, Gus. Appreciate you, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. We had 100 of you stick with us after, which was amazing. Thank you for that. This is recorded. It's going to go on our YouTube channel on Lab Code Agents. And if you have any questions for Gus, he's inside of the group. So just tag him or do me a favor, even better, go to powerisa.com forward slash LCA or just Power ISA and check him out there. We use him. We love his team. Thanks, Gus. We appreciate you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, everybody.